wanted to take a minute and just do this little video uh, based on the podcast that we released this week about seed chilling. Had a bunch of phone calls in here this morning, guys wondering about how long they can plant this week, when should they stop, when can they start again, that type of thing. I wanted to maybe go a little more in detail about seed chilling so we get this right in the process of what really is taking place out there. So I'm going to walk you through the steps and kind of talk about uh, a schedule as far as what the forecast is right now and how that fits into the planning window, especially for the Hayworth area. You guys outside of that have to use your own weather forecast to make the same conclusions. But we're going to walk you through the thinking process about how do we prevent seed chilling. Okay, so here we're looking at uh, what the seed looked like before it was planted. I just dug this seed. It was planted between 1 and 3 o'clock on Saturday. So it's been in the ground now 48 hours. And you can see it's quite a bit larger in size. It is imbibed quite a bit of water. And you can see it by the size of the kernel that it, that has taken that water on. How is that going to work? Of course, the seed is going to imbibe the water after it's done the imbibation or the amount of water that it's taken on then germination will take place if it's 50 degrees or higher in the soil. So we can put the corn in the ground in cold soil, imbibe the water, uh, and then wait for germination. And that could be a week or two weeks in some cases, depending how cold we planted. Or we could plant the seed in really dry soil and may not imbibe the water, and it could sit there a while before it swells. But for this seed to go from this size here to this size, so you can see it's almost doubled in size per se as I look at it, there has to be a lot of stretching that takes place within the cells. So as the cells take on water, they have to basically expand and stretch out uh, to accommodate the water. The elasticity in the cell is directly correlated to soil temperature. So when we're 50 degrees or higher, the cells are more likely to stretch and expand and let this water in. But when we get to 50 degrees and below, then the elasticity of the cell walls gets to be uh, a lot tougher situation where instead of expanding, we can get the seeds to tear. We can get the cells to tear. So as cells start to tear within the, the, the seed itself in that expansion mode, that's when the damage takes place. Chilling damage is uh, situations where the root may not uh, take off at all or the sprout may not take off or neither one of them may take off. So maybe just a blank seed that sits there itself. Or in a lot of cases, we just get what we call a more milder case of cock of cork screwing when the uh, mesocotyl will kind of spin in circles instead of head for the surface itself. Again, as you dig these plants up, they may not have any insect damage, any disease to them. They just look like they stopped all of a sudden or they got disoriented in itself. So it's a matter of what temperature the water is when it comes into that seed. So it's 50 degrees or higher. These uh, cells tend to expand and take in that water when we get below 50 degrees especially the mid 40s or lower the elasticity of the cells is not that good and we're more likely to see <clears throat> rupturing of cell walls and bringing on this damage so the chilling is the biggest issue of this first 24 hours to 48 hours that the seed is in the ground so it's going to start taking on water almost immediately the whole swelling process, once it gets fired up, probably somewhere between 24 and 36 hours. So in 48 hours, the seed is going to reach the size that uh, it's typically going to be for germination and it's taken in the water that it's going to need to take in to do that. From that point on, we if we can do that in warm water and still don't germinate, uh, we're, we've still eliminated quite a bit of risk of that tearing. But we, depending on how long we sit there before it germinates. If we get it swelled and it does germinate, then we're off and running and we may uh, even see a little bit of sprout showing up or a little bit of, of seed root showing up itself. Then the temperatures can go cold and this seed's going to be in better shape. There's still a risk. If you take like last year's Mother Day Massacre when we stay cold and wet for a prolonged period of time, about 10 days, the longer this seed sits in the ground and doesn't make it to the surface, the more starch uh, reserves that we burn up within the seed and the more risk of seedling blight and insects attacking it. So the faster we get it out of the ground, the better. But step one is to try to stay away from the seed chilling. The seed chilling is going to be that first 24 hours, 48 hours in the soil itself. So farmers ask, if I'm going to push conditions, is it better to push it into cold conditions or, or start early coming out of cold conditions? Well, both of them are not ideal, but 
pushing uh, into cold conditions may be a little less risky than pushing planting on the backside, meaning the soils are still cold. You stick it in the ground. If it's going to be 12 hours or so in cold soils, you're probably really up the risk. So a situation where we drag our feet and we wait for the temperatures to get up. So if we put it in warm soil and it swells and then the temperatures drop, the risk is less than if we put it in cold soils and it swells before the soil warms up. So it's all that window there. Again, remember, we're not talking about a disaster out here. We're talking about losing, uh, you know, a small portion of the plants or ear count. So a lot of times there's very little reduction in stand as much as there is in the actual ear count as, as we would be counting later in the season due to the late emerging plants, plants that got slowed down by the corkscrewing and that type of a scenario itself. So as we look at the forecast here for this week, we can come up with some uh, suggestions on maybe where to tap the brakes and where to start again. Okay, so here we have the 10-day forecast for the Hayworth area right here, and everybody needs to look at their own uh, weather forecast. But the area of concern we have is when these temperatures drop right through here. So a situation where this is what's got us concerned as far as seed chilling goes itself. I want the seed swelled before we get into this window, so I need 24 to 48 hours. If we're to look at this and say when is the safest spot, it's going to be right here Tuesday. Tuesday night to, to uh, shut the planters down. That'll give us a full day, 24 hours, and a good chunk of the next day to get us closer to that 48 hours when that seed is swelled. It's going to sit there. It's not going to do anything but be swelled uh, through this time period, and maybe some of it will start to germinate, and then we're going to pick back up on the backside here itself. If we don't finish up uh, Tuesday night, we probably should be shutting it off at least early Wednesday morning. The closer we get to this uh, drop in temperatures on Thursday, the more trouble. So the corn planted on Thursday will be the ones that we're doing the most service calls on if this forecast is right because it's where the most of the corkscrewing would take place. When do we start again on the back side of this? Again, we're probably looking at sometime on Wednesday, Thursday when we fire back up. If we push it too hard here on Tuesday, uh, we may end up with, uh, again, the first 12 hours being in cool soil itself. So we're looking for that temperature to come back up and stay up. Let's not push it into cold conditions. That's almost guaranteeing we're going to bring out some cold water. We may tear that uh, seed up a little bit from that perspective. So again, the best, safest time is going to be tap the brakes there after we get it done Tuesday night. Probably hang on till about Wednesday before we jump back in. Anything planted in here is going to be high risk if this forecast is right. You guys to the south may have a better looking forecast than this. You guys to the north may even be rougher, stretch you out a few more days. But I hope that helps you in your decision making here. Again, remember, seed chilling doesn't destroy the stand. Uh, it will depend on how much rain comes with this 80% chance of rain. That could be as big a threat if we saturate the soil in cool conditions itself but seed chilling tends to lower ear count so how do we keep in that six percent drop in ear count we pay attention to um, changes in conditions like what we have right here so hope that helps you out